Yes, hello. Is this uh, Delbert's Demolition in uh, Construction Service? Oh, Delberta. Well, how are you today, ma'am? What? Never mind that. You want to know why I'm buying up all the largest fields in Elm Creek and wondering if I'm going to take over someday? Well, Delberta, no. <laughs> That's that's not the that's not the intent at all. I mean, you know, I have no plans to take over anything. I'm just trying to expand my farm. Oh, okay, okay. Well, Delbert, I'm uh, I'm I'm sorry if you don't believe me, but um, I don't know what else to say. But is Delbert around? I'd kind of like to talk to him. No, it's not that I don't want to talk to you anymore. It's just that I have some business uh, for Delbert. Uh, okay, all right. You have a nice day, ma'am. Delbert, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. So, um, hey, I've uh, I got some uh, container silos with some seeds and some fertilizer and stuff like that in it, and uh, I need them moved to a new location on the farm. So I was wondering if you could come out and help me with that. And uh, it, it, you'll be right down. You're, you you want to get out of the house and get away from Delberta as quickly as possible. Yeah, I don't blame you. I mean, um, that's th okay. <laughs> we'll see you down here in a little bit, Delbert. All right, bye bye. Let the water go where it wants to go You can run and hide You can bury yourself beneath the stones Somebody told me don't pretend Cause everyone could use a friend sometimes Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to... Our, our main goal is to replant our two large fields <coughs> that uh, apparently Delberta <laughs> is upset that we bought. Um, and I've got a, a really nice solution for uh, a planter uh, for that, which we'll go over here in a little bit. But uh, as you can see, I have finally done something about my pain in the neck... Um, uh, filling stations that were in a weird position and too close together 
for us to load up. So, um, I, I emptied out the, the fertilizer and the seed that I had in there, but I still have over in the, the other two, I still have silage additive and herbicide. And I'm not sure, you know what I think I'm going to actually do. I think I'm going to leave those two in place for now until they, until I empty them. And then once I empty them, then we'll transfer them over to here. So this is a liquid and this is a liquid. So these two will, will make the herbicide and the silage additive. This is a dry. So this is going to be the seeds. Um, and this of course will be the fertilizer. Okay. So the way that I paid Delbert for doing this is that when I sold the original ones, I only got a portion of the price. And then when I bought the new ones, I had to rebuy them at the full price. And so the difference there is basically the fee that I paid for, for Delbert to, to move these for me. Um, however, there is one thing I am going to also do. I think that these, uh, these silos here, which are, um, they're a mod. They're only a thousand bucks. Whereas the base game one is 16,000. I think this is way too cheap. So since we bought three of these, I think we should pay, um, we'll pay 15,000 a pop for them because we already paid a thousand so that the price lines up with this. So that basically means, uh, we owe the game $45,000. All right. So let's do that right now. Okay. Remove $45,000. That's been done. Now everything is paid for. And when we resell the old version of these over on the other side, once, you know, once they uh, wear out or, or run out, we'll get like probably less than 50% of the price. And on, honestly, I'm not going to worry about that one way or the other. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, drop our fertilizer and our seed back off in those two. And then I'm going to show you the new cedar slash planter slash direct drills slash huge slash awesomeness <laughs> that we're going to use uh, moving forward. Okay, so let's get this product dropped off first. And yeah, this should work great because it's all just a straight shot. There's no finagling and trying to, to back stuff in and get into, um, you know, tough corners and stuff like that. And it should work quite well. So we're just going to go, whoops, to here and overload the seeds. Uh, when I was trying to line these up, it was a little tricky. Uh, I decided to line the silos up with mostly with each other. Um, I know they kind of taper off to the left as we look at it this way, but then this, this line coming through here does, does something similar too. Um, so yeah, I think that that's good. It might not be perfect, but it's good. And it's going to make it, you know, so much easier for us to to get in here now and, and load and unload from those containers. Uh, as you noticed in the little montage there, I, I moved the round bale storage over to that little corner there. That's a good spot for it because I'm sure we'll probably utilize that to some degree moving down, uh, down the line. I think we will anyways. And the good thing about over here is we now have more room, at least for the silage additive, to uh, get in there and, and load it up. I might need to move those low boys. Well, no, I think we can we can still back up the sprayer in there to get to that. It's not really that hard to do. So I think we're in good shape as far as that goes. Now, my plan for our next major purchase for the farm is, is we're going to upgrade to the uh, to the large cow barn with the auto feeder. And then, and then after that, we are going to start... Uh, the next major purchase is we're going to get some really nice sheds and expand um, the farm, the farmyard. But I want to get the I want to get the big cattle barn next first, so the farmyard will come later. My plan is to basically convert um, this whole little section right here into more farmyard with a nice big shed and a workshop and some other and a garage and some other stuff too 
Uh, but, you know, that's down the road because that's still, that's several hundred thousand dollars down the road, we'll see. <laughs> uh, and the cow barn's, you know, the highest priority for me at the moment. Okay, let's get this fertilizer dropped off. And I will, uh, I'm going to do that uh, off camera. And then when we're ready to pull out the new cedar, I'll bring you guys back. Don't go away. Okay, guys, uh, we are ready to get our new cedar. So I found this beauty on the Mod Hub. And if we go to um, planters, we've got to go to planters. And this is what we got here. So this is the Stara Estrella 32. It's very expensive, but that's okay. Um, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to lease to own it and then hope it comes on sale, um, uh, you know, so that we can buy it. But I'm not going to pay the full price for it right off the bat just because it's so expensive. Uh, plus, we need, you know, to save up our money for the, for the big cow barn, which is going to be almost three quarters of a million dollars. Um, okay, so basically, this is a direct drill. Okay, so um, offers the possibility to seed directly. It is uh, fourteen point four meters. The three John Deere seeders that I normally use are about fifteen point six meters, so we lose a little bit of of working width. But the trade off is that we're working with one piece of equipment. The AI will be able to use it. We'll be able to very easily refill it, and uh, you know we'll be able to back it up and do all that stuff with it. Uh, all those things are a big hassle when I'm trying to use the three John Deere cedars. Now the three John Deere cedars we've had up to this point, they worked great. They're a very inexpensive solution, but they are a pain in the butt to work with. So I think it's time for us, you know, to move up, move up in the world when it comes to seeding fields, especially because it is my intent, at least for now, to keep flipping our, our big fields between hay and arable crops. And so we need a good machine uh, to do that. Okay, um, it can hold both seed and fertilizer. And the cool thing about this is it's both a planter and a seeder. So it'll work with the small grain seeds, but it also will work as a planter with corn, uh, which we are, I am planning on doing corn in the future, uh, sunflowers, sugar beets, and cotton. So it's, it's a very nice all-in-one machine. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to lease to own this. And here again, if it does happen to come up on sale um, in the interim, we will, we'll, we'll just purchase it. If not, then all of our lease payments are going towards um, uh, going towards purchasing it, right? So, uh, by the way, I, I should have showed you this. It's kind of expensive to lease, but that's okay. We can afford it. It's going to cost us $2,000 a day when we're not using it and $4,200 per work hour. But remember, these costs are going towards purchasing the, the implement, um, you know, later on down the road if we don't get it on sale in, you know, in the meanwhile. Okay, so... There we go. Very nice machine. I'm very much looking forward to using it. Uh, it does require, uh, I think, 380 horsepower. And our uh, our JCB is 384, so it can handle it. Uh, but, of course, our Fint is, is over 500 horsepower. Now, we're going to do something also. I don't know if we need to do this, but in the real world, you know, pulling an implement that large, we really probably need to do something, uh, have a little bit better traction. So... We're going to modify our Fint here, and we're going to put some dualies on it uh, so we have better traction to pull this. And maybe we actually do need to do it, too. Or we might get that thing out in the field and, and it, have it start slipping. I don't know, but we're going to head that one off at the pass. Okay, so uh, we want to go to Customize, and we want to do... Uh, I guess the question, though, is do I want to do both front and back or just back? Oh, I guess I don't have that option with BKT tires. Okay, well, that decides it then. <laughs> We're going to go with dualies on both the front and the back. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, let's customize. It's going to cost us $11,500, but then after that, we can switch the tires back and forth without a fee because we own them. Okay. Wow, look at that, man. Definitely changes the the look of our tractor. <laughs> I might not, be, excuse me, goodness gracious, my throat. Um, oh, I might not be able to park this in here now. We might have to come up with a different solution. But again, like I said, after we're, after we get the big cow barn purchased, the very next thing is we're going to up our, our shed garage storage game, all that. Um, yeah, I can still get this in here. It's a little, 
definitely a little tighter, but it works. Cool. All right, neat, neat. So let's hook up to the cedar slash planter. I have no idea where I'm going to park this thing, but again, we'll we'll fix that issue when we get the new shed. We'll figure something out in the meanwhile. This is not a machine you want to leave out in the weather, of course. Hook everything up there. Okay, so uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to drive through our new filling station area. I think I can get across the bridge with this. Yeah, we should be able to. We just got to hit it right in the middle. Um. Yeah, I think that's right. When I was messing with, I, I, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I did I did test this on a test save. And you have to, you actually have to load it on the right hand side. It won't load on the left hand side. And it took me a while to figure that out because I was scratching my head going, why isn't this thing working? Uh, so it has to be on the right hand side to, to actually load it. Let's open it up there. The square uh, rectangular bins hold the fertilizer and the two big round well, the two big square with the round openings, those that's what holds the seat. So we should be able to get it right about here. Right about here. Okay, hold on a sec. We should see a thing pop up to load the seed. Okay, why isn't that... Oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe it's the right-hand side that we have to load from. Okay, yeah, maybe it is. I All I remember is that it only loaded from one side. Okay, that's... Okay, the fertilizer will load from the left. Huh, okay. Here, let's... Let's see if we can get in. We shouldn't have to get this close, but maybe we do. No, it's not popping up with a prompt to load the seat in. Okay, well, let's try it then from from the other side. Uh, I, I must <coughs> excuse me. I must just have it backwards. That seems odd though that you have to you can only load it from the one side whereas the fertilizer apparently well maybe maybe you can't load the fertilizer from the other side I don't know I don't recall seeing any specific instruction about that in the mod description Our wheels are getting jammed in there a little bit There we go. Okay. So, yeah, that's odd. Okay, so it's it's a, a very specific spot. It's like the back left corner of the of the cedar uh, that you have to get it to trigger it. That's fine. I mean, as long as we understand how it works, it's just a little bit odd. Okay, cool. So let's close the lids on everything. And uh, we definitely want to change this over to grass. And then, and you know, the, the other nice thing about this is we have one machine to deal with. We don't have to make sure all three of the separate cedars are set to the right seed. And, you know, there were there were even times with those cedars when I, where I accidentally, not meaning to, hit the wrong button and change one of them to a different seed right in the middle of planting. You know, that situation. So, yeah, I think, I think I'm really going to very much appreciate this new setup here and the AI can use it too uh, the AI had trouble with those John Deere cedars so that's another huge plus for sure okay so let's get on over to our usual starting point here 
on fields uh, 57. And we'll start unfolding. This thing is a monster. <laughs> it's awesome. It's like the perfect setup, you guys, because it's about as wide as they come. Well, I know I know you can actually get a little bit wider. But it's a planter and a seeder and a direct drill and a fertilizer all in one machine. Who could ask for anything more, man? Okay, so let's get lined up here. Now, um, we are going to do a course play, but I'm I'm going to run it myself, uh, at least for the first few passes, just just because it's fun. Um, but let's set up the course play first. So we're going to go here, and no course. All right, so for this, we're going to want... Um, I'm just trying to decide if I want to do the spiral set up all the way. Yeah, that seems to work pretty good in most cases. So with the width of this, I'm thinking, let's see, one, two, three, four, five to six headlands. Let's try six and see what it does. No, it still has a little bit of up and down in the middle. Not that that's a bad thing. Um, you know what else, too? I just want to make sure. Sometimes it doesn't pick up the width correctly. Okay, it did. All right, let's go with eight headlands. You know, the other thing we could do, though, is... The, the one downside to doing the spiral setup is I always have to hit the corners. Whereas if we did, let's see, I don't know if two headlands is going to be enough space for it to turn around. It depends. If it does the up and downs this way, it should be. Let's just see what it does. Just curious. Yeah, see, it's going that way, which means it could potentially run into those trees. What if we add another headland to it? We could try this. I mean, you know, we can always change it later. So, yeah, let's try this, and we'll see how it works. Um, okay, so we want to go to here. And um, I feel 57. We want to save this course and activate it. So this is going to be F57. Whoops, it looks like my caps lock key is on. F57. Um, what was it? It was four, 15, 14.8 meters. No, here, well, let's just do it this way. We'll just go Stella Cedar. That works. Okay. So we got the course locked in. Um, whoops. So that's looking good. Yeah, I, I think it'll probably have enough room to turn around, but we won't know for sure until, until you know, it gets down there. All right, let's turn this off, and I want to turn GPS on and bring this up. Uh, let's do auto width, so that should be right, 47.24. And we're going to call this F57. Stella Cedar. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't save it. F57 Stella Cedar. Save. <laughs> I have to... All oh right, I have to do this part first. Uh, we want... A plus heading. 
and I believe this is a 180 degree heading here. Set cardinal. Okay. Stella Cedar. Safe. All right. Let's see. Does that look about? Yeah, that does look about right. I think. I think that's about where we want it. Okay. Let's get some lights on here. Drop her down and turn it on. And there we go. Look at that. What a nice machine, man. Each one of the uh, seating channels, I guess you'd call them, are numbered. So there's 32. I like it. I like it. What I think I'll do is I'll do the head I'll, I'll do the headland and when when I get um, the third headland finished then I'll I'll switch over to course play and let it do the up and downs and we'll just see how how it handles that. All right, make sure there's no train coming. Um It's so nice that I can I can back this up. Yeah, I do I can tell you already I do not regret getting this. Not in the least. Alright, now let's switch this, which is control R, I think. Yep. And then Uh, yeah, it's not it's not gonna line up right here, so I think what I'll do is we'll have a little bit of overlap on the second pass, but I don't wanna change it because then it then it'll mess it up on the other end, you know? So we'll just kind of manually follow the line here on this first pass down the headland. But yeah, again, uh, this is going to make this job so much better, especially, you know, again, we're we're flipping these fields every year now. Um, and we're going to have new fields later on to seed and to plant with planter, a.k.a. corn. So I, I just feel really good about this the setup man but boy it was expensive good thing is we can afford it I'm just gonna keep the in fact here let's even just turn that off for now until we get to the other side of the field anyway Tractors having absolutely no trouble whatsoever pulling it. Again, I don't know if the dually wheels actually made a difference. They might have. But it just seemed like the right thing to do with such a large implement, you know. So we'll get up to this end and then we'll flip the... Uh, the GPS back around. Okay, let's lift, raise that up, and get lined up here. Okay, we'll turn this back on. And yeah, see, it's over that way a little bit, but that's fine.
I'm not going to follow it exactly. It's just as long as the left end of the cedar is overlapping off the end of the field just a little bit. And then moving forward, then we can just follow the, the GPS as it's as it's set. Okay. Lift it up, turn it around. Put this back that way. Line it up and go to town. This uh, doesn't look like this has ridge line markers. Not that we really need those anyways, especially with GPS, but it's interesting that it doesn't. Most planters do. Uh, at least from what I've seen, anyway. That's what it looks like in first person. Very cool. Okay, let's lift her up. Get in position to go this direction. And flip this around. Um, yeah, we're going to actually want to go on this line here. Having the, the dual wheels, especially on the front and the back, makes the tractor look so much larger than it does, does without them. <laughs> it's very cool. I love it. Very cool. We probably should think about changing OG's clothes again. I think he's been wearing that case outfit for a couple years. <laughs> Poor guy. It's just something I never really think about, you know? This game isn't about fashion. It's about farming. No, there's no problem. Uh, nothing wrong with having a little bit of fashion and, you know, mixed in too, I suppose. Alright, raise that up. Uh, how are we aligned now? Yeah, we'll follow this line here. Uh, we're actually going to need to Get lined up with it a little bit better, though. Yeah, cut that a little too tightly there. You know, it occurred to me that the headlands for course play are probably not going to line up exactly with this. So what we might do is... Well, we'll figure that out when the time comes, I suppose. The main thing I want to find out is if, if he can clear these trees when he, you know, gets down to this end here. I don't bother doing a GPS on this angle. It's not that big a deal. Flip that back over. And we'll have GPS do the work for us this time. It's a handy mod. I didn't think I was going to like it at first because it's like, well, I don't want the computer driving for me when I'm when I'm driving. I want to do it myself, but it's uh, it's actually really handy to have, especially when you you know the bigger you get and the more work you have to do. We've already had that discussion multiple times with all this automation stuff. So, yeah, no regrets. 
Okay, flip that around. Get you right here. We're going to do one more headland. Oh, he doesn't like to line up to that. There we go. Uh, we'll do one more headland here, and then we're going to switch over to course play and uh, see how it handles the up and downs. Oh, this is an Estrella, not a Stella. I'll have to change the names. Not a big deal. Okay. That gets the three headlands done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn the AI loose uh, with course play. Um, you know what, too? Let me, um, let me redo that name. I don't know why I was thinking Stella. Stella's a beer. It's actually a pretty good beer, too. Light and crisp. That's not what we meant to do. Let's turn that off for now. Okay, so we'll the tractor's on the field. Um, let's... It's Estella, right? Or Stara. Stara is the, the brand and Estrella is the model. We can just go with Stara. It's easier to spell. Okay, so let's uh, clear this. And we're going to go, we're going to just keep, we're going to regenerate the course as is. Okay, and then we're going to go here. We're going to go to field 57, save course. Activate F57 star a uh, cedar. There we go. All right. And then we're going to go to change mode. We're going to select the Stella cedar and we're going to delete that because that's not correct. Star a cedar. Okay, good. Now, Let's set that to nearest waypoint. Let's turn the course on. And I gotta figure out where I'm gonna actually start off. If we start off here. Yeah, okay, so where do they start the up and downs then? It's gonna be over here, I think. Yeah, it looks like they start the up and downs right here. Okay. Uh, no. Yeah, we're not going to be correct on this side. So we're going to actually have to start it right here. All right, so uh, nearest waypoint... I'm going to actually leave the course lines on for now. And uh, let's see what happens here. Once I'm confident I can turn this loose with uh, course play, uh, we're going to go grab the, the big roller. You know, I'm starting to think maybe I should just lease to own that thing too because we're using it all the time and I keep leasing it and then returning it. And that doesn't really make sense. So, in fact, here let's uh, let's just do that now. We're gonna we're gonna lease to own this, and again, if it comes on sale in the interim, then we'll buy it, and um, we can get. Yeah, he's he's doing good so far. I think he's gonna have plenty of room. Uh, we'll we'll come back and check on him though. Let's get the JCB out because I don't think our John, our, our New Holland can handle that roller. It's just a little bit much for it in terms of its horsepower requirements. Maybe we should put some dually wheels on this too for the roller. I like the dually wheels, you guys. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it looks awesome. 
And it gives you better traction too. Let's go to customize. Um, oh, okay, so we have wide tires on this, actually. It's not going to let me do dualies with BKTs. That's grayed out. Whoops. Okay, Michelin has wide tires, standard. Oh, okay, maybe we can't. I guess, I guess we can't do that on this model. You know, and considering the way that this turns, too, it's... Yeah, it, it might, the tires might rub up against the fender too because it just has such a sharp turn. Okay, well, it was a nice idea. We do have wide BKTs on it though, so we still have pretty good traction. Yeah, see how it turns there? If we had a dually on there, I'd be running right into the edge of the implement. I'm just going to have the AI drive it to the field. I'll just, I'll get it out on the road first though. Well, that's weird that it missed that one little spot there. Huh. Okay. I'm just trying to find the best configuration uh, on course play so that I have the least amount of cleanup work to do afterwards, you know? All right, guys. Well, I'm going to let this run, and I'm going to get the rolling started, and when... A course play gets over to the end of the field where it's going to start, you know, getting into those trees. I'll bring you back at that point, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it does. And of course, you know, if it's if it's messing up, then we'll just adjust it. I think it'll be fine, but we'll just see how it goes. All right, so I will uh, bring you back in a little bit here. All right, guys, I'm bringing you back early. Uh, something just occurred to me. This setup is, is not ideal because he's leaving little pieces at the end of each row, which means I'm still going to have to come around and get them anyways. So I think we're going to go back to an all headland, you know, spiral configuration. And the reason for that is because it's faster. He, he doesn't have to stop, turn around, get lined up. He just keeps going around around in circles. So, yeah, we're going to nix this... Um, uh, we're going to nix this course, and we're just going to do a spiral course. So let's drive him back to here. I'm I'm going to set the course now, but I'll probably just finish up this last bit because, you know, once it's set to the spiral course, it's not going to really make sense for him to do it anyway. Um, so, yeah, let's get over here. We are going to have to... Watch out for the roller. Actually, the roller shouldn't come this far over, so I think we'll be okay. Let's get lined back up. This is good enough, I think, for the course to generate. Um. Okay, so we're going to remove that. We're going to go... To change mode, select Star Cedar, delete that, activate, yes. Okay, now let's create it. Oh, is he going to hit us? Yowzers! <laughs> okay. Let's get lined back up a little bit. Our new beefy dually tires absorbed that hit, so we're fine. Actually, that wouldn't be good for the beefy dually tires either, would it? Okay, this should be good. Now, let's go here, and we're going to uh, go back to just doing a bunch of headlands. Um, let's see what 8 does. I don't remember what we had it on before. Yeah, I think that works. So this way, you know, he'll just keep going around in circles. He won't, he won't ever stop, and it's just going to be faster. If I'm going to have to come along and clean up the mess later on anyways, you know, it's kind of a moot point to do it the, the previous way we were doing it. Let's go to here. Let's save course. Activate. F57. Um, Starla, right? That's what it is? Starla? Yeah, Starla. 
uh, Starless Cedar. No, Star, uh, I, I, <laughs> I didn't think that was right. Star, uh, not Starla. Oh, for goodness sakes. Okay. Here, let's just regenerate the course. I think you can actually, can you change the name? I think you can actually, but I don't know. It's simpler to do it this way. More work, but simpler. Um, okay. Save course, activate FS. Uh, no, not FS, F57, Stara, Cedar. Okay, now let's do change mode. Oh, yeah, you can rename that. Okay, well, that's good to know for the future. Uh, but we're just going to delete that one. Okay, yeah, I think that's, this is going to work better. But like I said, uh, I'll just finish up the rest of this myself because no reason not to oh we're gonna have to stop the rolling too until I get this done um yeah okay so you just stay here and I'll start you back up when I need you okay so let's turn uh, GPS back on And get lined up here. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here. I'm going to finish uh, planting this field and rolling this field. And then that's all we need to, to do with it until the, the grass germinates. And then we're going to run our slurry spreader with digestate. Speaking of which, um, let's take a look and see how much. We should have a bunch of digestate. Yeah, look at that. We almost we have three quarters of a million liters of digestate, um, which which will is great, absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use uh, uh, once the the grass germinates. I'll 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 go back over it again with the slurry spreader to get the second application of fertilizer on it, and then we're basically gonna wash, rinse, repeat the same exact process on field sixty eight. I don't think I'm gonna show that on camera because you know it's the same exact thing. And um, so I'll get that done and then we'll probably finish. Oh, wait a second. You know what? We have one more thing we need to do in July. Okay, here, I'll come back and finish this later. We need to sell sugar. We need to sell our sugar. So let's go to our pickup truck. Uh, we have a surplus of sugar now and July is the month to sell it in. Well, I think it is. Let me double check that. I'm glad I remembered to do that before I let you guys go. Uh, sugar, sugar, sugar. Yep, July is the best month, which is kind of cool because July is usually the worst month to sell just about anything, with the exception, of course, of sugar. Okay, so who's got the best price? Five twenty-six at the fast food restaurant. Five thirty at MJ's Mini Mart. Five thirty-three at MJ's Bistro. So that's going to be our best price there. Okay, that's great because MJ's Bistro is right here on our property. Okay, sugar, 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 sugar. At some point, we have 60,000 liters. At some point, we're going to need to... 61 pallets? Are you kidding me? Wow! Okay, this is going to take a few loads, you guys. Goodness gracious. We might need the big low boy for this. Well, how many pallets is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 16. Nah, I mean, it'll take us a few loads, but I don't want to get the big trailer out right now um okay yeah let's load this up the other thing I was gonna say is we need to uh, we need to refill the sugar we don't have to do it right now but at some point we're gonna need to refill the the sugar plant and we have tons of sugar beets I've had mentioned this to you guys before but yeah well, it's still about 40 percent full but, you know, we have so many sugar beets, we probably have enough to last the rest of this entire playthrough. Okay, well, let's get this sold to MJ's Bistro and make ourselves a little bit of money. I don't think we're going to make, like, a bazillion dollars, but, you know, it's it's just extra sugar that we don't need for any other reason. So, it's, well, I don't want to call it free money because of all the investment, but, you know.
So we're making about $8,000 per load. All right, that was uh, four loads and eight thousand dollars and three dollars. So we made what thirty-two? Yeah, thirty-two thousand bucks. Not bad. Um, all right, guys, uh, that is gonna be it for this episode. So, like I said, I'll get the uh, fifty-seven and sixty-eight all going with uh, the hay planting. And we'll finish out July. And then um, probably bring you back in August. We'll see. It depends upon, you know, what's what the next big thing is. If August, August might be a bit of a slow month for us. So if that's the case, I'll bring you back then in September probably. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a fun episode. We got some cool stuff done. And yeah, I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video. Turn off those lights. And we'll catch y'all in the next episode. Bye-bye.